Hey crew, today we're gonna to do a quick lesson on partial quotients. I'm gonna do a couple of examples of how to use partial quotients when doing division. The best thing about partial quotients is it really helps out students who maybe aren't as strong in their multiplication facts and can't figure out exactly how many times something goes in. They can use the facts they know to supplement them. So let's take a look at how it works. So we're gonna be using the equation 38 divided by five. So I write it this way and you'll see why in just a minute. Um, it can be used other ways, but this way with the tail coming down is really the most effective way that I've uh, seen it. And it's really easy for students to use. So what we're gonna do is we take our normal equation um, written like this, and then we're gonna bring down just a border line here. And this is just gonna separate our answer from our numbers inside. <clears throat> so the best thing about um, partial quotients is when students look at this, the first thing they think is how many times does five go into 38? Now, some students will get that right off the bat, no problem. Other students might have a little bit more difficulty with it. So I don't need to know how many times five goes into 38. I just need to know how many groups of five I can take away. So they can go with anything they know. So let's think through our multiplication of five. I could do one group of five, which is five. I could do two groups of five, which is 10. So I'm gonna go with that. So all I need to do is know that five times two equals 10, and I can take 10 away from 38. So on this side, I'm gonna put in the number of groups of five that I'm taking away. So I'm gonna take away two groups of five. Now, if I remove two groups of five, the language I'm using groups of means multiplication. So if I take away two groups of five, how many total is that? That would be 10, two groups of five equals 10. So since I took those out of my equation, I can subtract them from my original dividend. So I do 38 minus 10, again that 10 right here came from two groups of five. So 38 minus 10 gives me 28. Now at this point, I basically start the problem over again. How many groups of five can I remove from 28? And if this worked for me the first time, I can do it again. I can remove two more groups of five. So two more groups of five, again, is gonna give me 10 and I simply subtract. I can repeat this process until I either run out or have to use a smaller number. So again, I'm gonna get down here to 18 and 18 is bigger than 10. So I can remove two more groups of five. Two more groups of five again is 10, and I get down to eight. Now at this point, I can't remove two groups of five because I would try and subtract 10 and it wouldn't work. There's not 10 left, there's only eight. So now I need to think how many groups of five can I remove from eight? I can think of my basic multiplication facts, five times one. I can remove one group of five. So I put my one group of five here, and one group of five is five. One times five is five. Subtract it out and I get three. This is another great part about partial quotients is it really helps us out when we get to the remainder. When I look here, I cannot remove a group of five from three. Three is smaller than five. If I try and remove a group of five, I'm gonna be left over with decimals. So what I do is I circle that, that's gonna become my remainder, and then my answer, is just the sum adding up of our, all my partial quotients on the right side there. So two plus two plus two plus one, which is seven remainder three. And that's how you use partial quotients. Let's take a look at another example and I'll walk you through how to do that one as well. 37 divided by three. Now, because we're doing partial quotients, I'll drop my line over here. And now I wanna think how many times can three go into 37? And again, students can use any partial quotient that they want. So if they wanna start with one, two, three, that's, they can do that, that's easy. But I know that three can go into 37 10 times. So I wanna get a nice big number. I wanna try and get the biggest numbers possible and that will eliminate the number of steps, or excuse me, <clears throat> limit the number of steps I have to do in order to solve it. So let's do a group of 10 first. 10, excuse me, 10 groups of three. 
Now, 10 groups of three, using our groups of language, 10 groups of three is 30. So that takes a huge chunk out of my answer. And that's what I really wanna go for because that's gonna make me do as few subtraction problems as possible. 37 minus 10 is gonna give me seven. And now the only thing left is seven. So how many groups of three can I remove from seven? It's two groups. So I can do two groups here and that's gonna give me six. Subtract that out and I get one. My last question, can I remove any groups of three from one? I can't, it's smaller, excuse me, less than, so I circle it, 10 plus two is 12, remainder one from down here. That's partial quotients, a really simple alternative to standard algorithm, and also I think a great way, a great step forward into teaching standard algorithms. So something that all students should have in their toolbox before they get into the standard algorithm.